weeks back in the Philippines. So they've opened the door, haven't they, the Philippines for themselves and the other teams to come through. Well, it's not the last we've seen of the Volcanoes for sure. Here we go then, everybody. Buckle yourselves in late on the afternoon here. It's the cup final. Who will qualify for Tokyo 2020? The host Korea up against Hong Kong. They're in the tunnel waiting. They've got their tracks who tops them. I've not seen that before. And Korea, perhaps surprisingly in the final, they'll be looking towards players like their skipper, number four, Park Wan Yung, Andre Kokolad. And again, the bench, we see the big names of Jang Jongmin in seven, Jang Xiongmin in nine. Hong Kong almost unplayable leading up to this. Have yet to concede a point in this weekend. Skippered by Max Woodward. And there is so much experience there in Jones, Coverdale, Yu Cam Shing and Jamie Hood. But the youthful playmakers, Kadu Lee, Russ Webb, and on the bench, well, they've got plenty of depth, the McQueens. There we come. Well, this is going to be massive, and the crowd is going to lift themselves again. What a semi final we saw earlier, Jed. Fireworks here in Incheon, Korea. Gee whiz, what an occasion. It's wonderful to be sharing it with the people and attendance live and with you, the viewers, right around Asia. This important final qualification for the Olympic Games. It's no small thing. And at the end of this, well, there's a group of family names that will go down in the sporting history books forever. Standing by then for the national anthems of China and Korea. March of the Volunteers, Anthem of China. Here we go, it's game 22 on day two. Nine countries started this weekend with the hope of qualifying for Tokyo 2020. And it comes down to Hong Kong versus the host South Korea who've had a dismal season in the Asia Rugby 7 series. They've come and they've beaten in the semi-final China. It was a nail biter. They got over them though. And they find themselves here against Hong Kong, who have swept all before them. No one 
has yet scored a try against Hong Kong. And they are firmly focused on Tokyo. The current Asian Games gold medalists. Second place. Second place in this season's 2019 Asia Rugby 7 Series. And welcome you all from around the world for this incredible moment for these men from both sides, their supporters, their friends, their family around the world. 14 minutes of rugby. It's been raining, it's been windy, but the rain has stopped for the final. Referee Dolman from New Zealand gets us underway. And with the winds at their back, Russ Webb pops that down deep and asks Korea to come back at them. Chan Yong Hung with the first carry. This is Han Kun Q and Lee Jones and Hood get busy on him. Chang fires it away. This is Jong Yon Sik. This guy can go and Hood comes in with another tackle. He's all over the place, Jamie Hood. Michael Coverdale's getting in there to help. There's Andre Kokolard with his first touch. A little bit of goose there. He's in the gap. Look at this guy go. It's Han Kun Q. Great tackle from Russ Webb, chops him down. They're into the Hong Kong half. Park Wan Yung. This is Lee Song Bai. Looking good. Looking good starting off this game. Korea. Can they be the first team to get a five-pointer? But Hong Kong have marshaled them side to side and they've won a line out. Well, a furious start by the home team, as you would expect. They came out of the blocks against China, breathing fire, and they spent most of the game in the middle of the pitch, those two teams. Hong Kong, they are the masters of managing the energy flow. Kadu Lee discipline. hits covered out. Now Hong Kong's turn to throw something at Korea. A couple of kitchen sinks in there, and Yu Kam Shing runs hard at Jong Yon Sik. Just arcing up the defensive line there. Lee Jones has to take that one. It's a good catch in the covers by the experienced Lee Jones. They're getting on the front foot now. They've got three playmakers out there, Hong Kong. Yu Kam Shing just decides to bring it back in. Set something up again, and Russ Webb gives it to Kadu Lee. And there's Hood, the three playmakers. Woodward takes the ball. Coming in hard is Kokolard. Two minutes gone. It's intense. They try to pull Kadu Lee in, and the referee has a look at that one. Jamie Hood. For the third time, Yu Kam Shing just puts his head down. And they win the penalty, and the crowd erupts. In from the side comes Jamie Hood, and Dolman penalises him. So both teams soaking up the pressure. Defensive structures holding well. Yeah, well, probably a fair call there as well, but it's energy-sapping stuff from Hong Kong. Korea won't feel like they've let much go. Here goes Lee Song Bay back into Hong Kong's half as Kokolard battles for that on the ground. Coverdale comes firing out of the blocks out wide to head that one off. Back to Chan Yong Hung. Big defence from Coverdale. Forcing the Koreans back. Han has to go down on the ground. Woodward smashes him down to the turf and wins the penalty. Good work by Russ Webb. Max Woodward playing a beautiful role in that tackle. Webb goes quick. Coverdale's on his shoulder. Kokolard tries to get his head in there. Hood and Woodward coming over the top with the high shots. Han Kun Q. Lee Jones burrowing in there. Russ Webb, the playmakers. Yu Kam Shing can't slip out of Kokolard's tackle. Russ Webb and Kadu Lee and Jamie Hood. These three playmakers in the middle of everything right now. Hood wraps it up in two hands and struggles forward. Just 10 metres out now. Four minutes gone. Russ Webb sees an opportunity. Coverdale and Jones clearing people out. Jamie Hood goes under near the posts. 
And they get the first score. There's players strewing all across the field. What an opening couple of minutes. Four minutes gone. And they hold on and Korea run out of numbers. Superb tactics by Hong Kong. And the execution of it all was absolutely outstanding. Yu Kam Shing has played possibly the best four or five minutes of sevens I think I've ever seen him play. But everything they've done here, Hong Kong, it's all been measured, it's all been accurate. The placement of the ball, Coverdale, just short passing, it doesn't have to be extravagant. It certainly isn't by any stretch of the imagination. They're factored into the conditions. And Jamie Hood, well, it's good to see the old war horse go in, isn't it? Sure is, and Russ Webb hobbles back to halfway, and they can see he's not right. He's done himself in there. So on comes Ben Rimini, another veteran. He joined the squad. He was the 13th man. He's coming for Liam Herbert, who's injured himself yesterday, and here he is. How many times has he got Hong Kong across the line in both formats of the game? He goes deep. And the Koreans are uh, just willingness to cross that dead ball line. Oh, oh and right. Yu Kam Shing comes screaming through there. And that'll go down as a little mistake against Rimini's name. Quite a strong wind at his back. There's only a couple of feet in it. Chang Yong Hun there just leaving that. It was pretty brave. Gutsy effort. Looking down there, we can see Jiang Xiong Min is on in number nine. That's danger signs for Hong Kong. Scored an absolute blistering try against China in the semi final. He's a handful. Something cooking here. They loop around. They've got gas outside. Here goes Jong Yong Sik. Jong Yong Sik. Rimini comes across. Rimini takes him, but he dots it in the corner. And the flag is up over there. Referee Soguru from Japan has seen a boot. Rimini, well, he saved it here. We're going upstairs anyway. Goodness me. Well, I'm not 100% convinced by the call by the AR. Ben Rimini did superbly getting over there. I'm never going to give him a hard word about being slow ever again. But I don't know if he got there in time. He's done a lot, but I don't think he's done enough. Oh, well, I could be wrong there, and I don't mind if I am. Woodward slides in to congratulate Benjamin Rimini. And outside, Anthony Moyes from Australia, the TMO, gives us a hard look. He wants another angle. And we wait expectantly. Jong Yong Sik can go. Well, they've got a camera looking down the line from the back. I wonder if they've got a recording of it. We can't definitively... Here we go. He's too far away. It's you can't bit, see that. Yeah, it's a bit low, isn't it? That foot there that just hit the ground. You, oh, he might have gone out there. I think he might have to go with the touchies. Gee, he was, well. First decision, he was right there. He was. I wasn't convinced, but I can be wrong. I'm allowed to be wrong. No, you've been wrong before. Oh, word, Ben Rimini, you've done well there. You've done very well there, if that's the case. Okay, so they're going with the on-field decision from Soguru-san from Japan. Under pressure, though, here. It's very windy. He nails it. Kaduli. Terrific work by Hong Kong. That's outstanding. Coverdale and Kaduli partner up to save the situation here. And I think we're going to have time for the line-out. And you can see the flag in the background. It is absolutely howling down there. I see one bloke with an umbrella. I don't think he should be using that. That'll be gone shortly. It's the over-the-shoulder throw. Oh, and scooting that up. Rimini saves it again. And Kaduli says... Smart. Screw that for a game of monkeys. We're done for half time. And Hong Kong... Well, they lead here seven points to nil. Exhilarating stuff. Ben Rimini has saved a certain five-pointer there. Still some life on those 34-year-old legs. 
well, pretty clear. Ben Rimini is absolutely fixated on going to Japan next year. He wants to go, you can really tell. But look at this try from Hong Kong. And it's come after a serious amount of effort and they have eventually broken Korea down and they might have broken the back of them too in that move. Everything Korea will do now will be just with that horrible hint of desperation. Everything from chasing to passing to tackling to entering the rucks. There's been plenty of action for them. This is when they thought they were away and the crowd let them know about it too. But watch this. Here he comes. I won't call him the Hard Tapu Express, but he's done very well, Ben Remini. And Hong Kong, well, they are the masters of variation. And I think what they lack in perhaps out and out pace and power of other sides, they make up in discipline and they make up in intelligence and they make up in the ability of being able to move the form of the team and move the method by which they do it. It's part of the strength of this Hong Kong outfit. And Korea, well, you, you just don't come into a weekend like this with an endless amount of bullets to shoot. And that game against China, it was an absolute thriller. But how do you get yourself back up there? Well, they've got a couple of bullets on the bench. One of them's Jang Jong Min in seven. He's yet to take the field. Leading try scorer here this weekend for Korea. Going back is Lee Seong Bai. And we're going to come all the way back, perhaps in front of the kicker, was it? Yeah, in front of the kicker's the core, way back inside the 22. I think it was covered out he's pointing to, so here's a big opportunity. Three blue in front of the kicker. And we've got Jang Seongman in number nine. You see him down there directly behind Lee Songbei. He's a, like a freight train once he gets the ball. Cole Collard now. Hong Kong yet to concede a try this whole weekend. Burning down that far sideline. Hood comes in and Makes the tackle after Kaduli misses. This is Jong Yon Sik. He got mowed down in the corner and he's he's lost that forward there. Woodward tidies up. A little bit of advantage to play here. Good battling run from him. Kaduli just struggling to keep Kwokwalad at bay. And oh, it's advantage over by the looks of it. Here goes another shot for Korea. The crowd getting fired up. Oh, and that's gone a little bit too far backwards. Great tackle. Yeah, great shot from Hood. Slows him down in his tracks there. And the big man, Jang, probably didn't want to add. He needs a little bit more space and time. Coverdale's over the top. He's going to win the penalty. Good work from Mike Coverdale. And he knows it too, Mike Coverdale. You don't see him express himself in this manner very often. He is a very cool customer. But this means something to him all right. And that's a big moment in the game. If Mike Coverdale was reacting like that. Well, he was the one pinged for being in front of Rimini. He probably felt a little bit responsible that they're in that situation. So he's he's relieved the pressure for a moment. Jang Song Min there just got a terrible pass. No favours. Rimini's only peeled off about 10 metres here. Here he goes. Lee Jones starts the tackle. Coverdale waits, gives it a bit of time, and then attacks. Pressure on Kadu Lee to hit Coverdale here again. Kokolard's going to try and get that. He almost does. It's well done by Coverdale. Rimini out to Hood, and he's going to give Tom McQueen something to chase here. Well, he'll chase all right. Look at him go. Oh, Jang's on as well in seven. Tom picks it up, looks up. Jang's got to get to his feet. Tom puts on a bit of footwork. McQueen to ground. They're going to bend them back the other way now. Max Denmark's on the field. What can he summon up, the youngster? Oh, he squirted that one forward with his first touch. He'll be cross. Of course, Coverdale's there. Four minutes to go.
great tackle again by Hood. Hood just showed him a little bit of sideline there, enough to get him interested in taking it. Hood backed himself, picked him off. Here goes Jang now, Jang Song Min, this big man. Tom McQueen is at sweeper. They're looking for Jang Jong Min. If they give him half a chance, he's not on this edge though. Kim Hyun Soo, halfway through the second half, looking for Jang. Jang and Jang. Here we go then. Here we go. It's Park Wan Yong. Park Wan Yong, there's no one in front. The sweeper's up in the line. And the crowd will tell you they're under the posts. And no one's coming back to make things difficult. He's going to just wait this out. I'm not sure who this favours really, if anyone. Ben Rimini finally, reluctantly, comes back. And that's a great knock from the skipper. They're back in. Game on. Well, interesting to see, isn't it? So, here it is. Here it is. This is what it comes down to. Forget all the cliches. What's it going to take? Who's it going to be? Where's it going to come from? All the wonderful questions that only sport can answer. It's thrilling. It's exciting. It's fascinating. It's terrifying at the same time. Well, they came from behind against China in the semi-final, and they won it in extra time. They decide to punch that over the top there, and they found the sideline. Two minutes remain. We're locked up here. And Hong Kong camped down in their own 22. The Koreans have turned their back. They don't even know that the, the, ta the throw was taken quickly by Hugo Styles, who's on. He gets the ball back from Woodward. Now the two McQueens out there, Alex and Tom. They've been in this situation before. Styles to cover out. Here's Denmark. A little bit of space. Woodward trying to get the arms free. Denmark comes over the top. Styles. Alex McQueen. McQueen puts it on the hammer. Kokolard does well to track back and grab him. Styles snipes Ren. Styles and Tom McQueen now. They work their way downfield. It's patient stuff. Alex McQueen. They need into to find the this kid Denmark and let him rip. Into the final moment. Woodward, he looks up, he beats one. He needs to get into the hands of Denmark, but he gets tied up in the ruck. He's going to go looking for it now, Max, if he can. Alex McQueen running across the field, looking to hook up with Hugo Stiles and his brother Tom. Covered out, comes back Denmark's direction. Oh, and he's bobbled it. It was a terrible pass. He clutched at it and dropped it. And that might have been their shot. Uh, Korea now with a scrum. Uh, it was a little floater, wasn't it? And the crowd is absolutely revving this side on here. Can they pull something out from this scrum? Jang Jong Min on the far side, blistering pace against Tom McQueen. Well, he can bounce back from this, but only if he can get around, hustle around and find the ball. Then Mark, at least they've got the advantage of territory at the moment, Hong Kong. Time up on the clock. Skipper Park hurries that one back. They're looking to give Jang as much space as possible and here he goes. Puts on a bit of footwork. Tom McQueen slows him down. He's done just enough there. He comes back at him a second time. Park, the skipper, on the hooter. Big moments here. Can they hold the ball? Jang Songman is off the field. He's injured. Defense is reset. Everything's reset back to zero. They're still in their own half. The worst thing that could happen to Korea here is to spill it in contact. He's getting isolated over here. Jong Yon Sik gets up and goes again. Buys himself a valuable second there for the support to get across. 
Getting on the footwork is Chang Yong Hung. In there's Hugo Styles, and they look to have wrapped that up. They have done. Good work from Young Styles. Now he wants to go yeah, quickly. Good, good Hugo. Take it to them. He gets on the hammer. Tom McQueen's out. Alex McQueen, sorry, and that's ingloriously just trickled across the sideline. We have full time here in Korea. An absolute nail biter of a match that hangs in the balance. It's seven all at half time. The Olympics wait and watch. Who will it be? Who's going to blink first? Who has got the mental fortitude to carry this on and finish this? Well, Grant, was it ever going? To, was it really ever going to be settled after 14 minutes? Let's be honest. The way that they've been going. This moment. There's been tons of moments in this game that have been just stunning. Some of the errors, well, drop balls, missed tackles. They've all had a go. This was a great try, though, in the end. Brought them back and put them in the running. Korea. I just wonder whether they've got the goods to go for that miracle play one more time. Who can tell? I thought they might be over and out already. Well, look, we thought they were over and out back in September in Sri Lanka when they finished dead last in the third leg of the series. Looked absolutely hapless, had lost all their self-belief and confidence. And here we are with pretty much the same group of men with a technical advisor, a South African, Charlie Lowe, who's come in and given them a bit of shape and a bit of self-belief. And they've elevated themselves from eighth into a shot at the Olympics here. Here we go, next team to score will win. And what we'll see here is we'll see the Koreans line up as they did against China. They put six players on the 10 meter line and they're shaping up the same way. Okay. The theory Charlie Lowe told me was that you've got to kick over the top of them and it's easier to take it going backwards than it is going forwards. What's Rimini going to do? Charlie Lowe's technique has worked. They've taken it on the full. It's a masterpiece. Oh, great tackle by Hugo Stiles. What a phenomenal tackle by Hugo Stiles. At the end of this game, when they ride it up, they won't be able to say that Hugo Stiles missed his chance. Look at this one. He's come in. Well, right around the ankles. What about that one? That's remarkable. That's Yu Hibomen, 13 there. He's the 13th man called into action. And so, first bit of pressure absorbed by Hong Kong. This Hugo Styles now to Rimini. And you've got Alex and Tom McQueen out there brimming with experience. Moments oh, like these they're born ball. for. Tom McQueen now has a look up, puts the shoulder in. Good work from Rimini to get there and Styles. Let's see if Max Denmark can get the ball here and redeem himself a wee bit. Alex Talented McQueen. Kid. He awaits out on the wing there. Rimini. Beats one, taken by Chang Yong Hung. Look at Hugo Styles, he's absolutely everywhere like with Russ devil. Webb off. And here's Max Denmark. This is the moment he's made for. Steps off the right twice. Good, good. Gets taken well by Yu Hebom. And still they work their way downfield. Korea need the ball. Hong Kong needs someone. McQueen to Styles. Just 15 metres out now. Coverdale, he must be burning in the quads. Rimini and McQueen, he's trying to put McQueen away. He's got one to beat. The defence comes at them. Alex McQueen has a cheeky look up here. He feels like he might just be able to dart around the side. Takes it on and asks questions of the defence. Fixes them. There's some good work over the top there. And they've won the penalty. Kim Yon Su there. Somehow he's fought off Coverdale there. And he's stood up for his country. Wow. That is a superhuman effort. Look at this. Well, side entry, arguable. Oh, but in the end, he, yeah. by the time he hits matter. the ground, he's square, I think. 
So now they look downfield. They've got the wind howling in their faces. They'll be desperate to force an error here. This is the man, Jang Jong Min. If he gets away, look at the footwork. Look at this. Denmark's after him. Remini's there. He makes another valuable one. Covered out. Just trying to find the pace out wide. Kim Hyun Soo won the turnover. Here's the skipper Park. This is Chang Yong Hook. He gets out of one. He gets away from Styles. I don't believe it. Korea. Chang Yong Hung against all odds. They went to extra time against China in the semi. They've gone to extra time against Hong Kong. At home, the hosts, they have tried a miracle and they have performed a miracle. And look at these pictures coming at you from eighth position in the last tournament to first in Hong Kong are scattered across the field, down on their haunches. They've got the yips. The conditions have been tough, Jed. But what a final. What can you say about this effort wow, from Korea? It's just absolutely magnificent. What drama. And it seems fitting that the Korean effort should come with drama and intrigue. And everything that goes with this well, this nation, this rugby nation, how they've done that, I just do not know. Denmark sits and looks on. Trip to France coming up for Hong Kong, no doubt about it. But what a win in front of their home crowd. And it's made them absolutely, well, delirious, hasn't it? Incredible scenes. Incredible scenes indeed. Well, as you said, just right. They've come in this as, I think it was fifth or sixth seed behind China and Sri Lanka and Hong Kong and even the Philippines. And they've just exceeded all expectations. We've been critical of them throughout the series. They've qualified for Tokyo 2020. Congratulations, Korea. Thoroughly deserved here at home. We've been critical of their ability to convert and play sevens as sevens should be played. They've always had talent. They've got the athletes. They've just lacked the direction. Charlie Lowe's come in, given them a little bit of that and some direction. And hats off to Charles Lowe. He's brought the party to the fans here. They join Japan. Ben Remini, well, you've got a feel for him. He did his best to save the day. Well... This run, they'll be playing this run for a number of years to come, I think. Hong Kong have put up an exciting and hard challenge. But they've overcome Hong Kong just like they overcome China. Well, oh, that, <laughs> that takes some real nerve. I don't know if the Korean rugby fans could handle too much more of this. It's enough to make you, well, seek medication. What a win. What an incredible outcome. Unbelievable win to a fantastic weekend. And, yep, I'll stand in the spot and say, yeah, I didn't think these blokes would do it at all. And back in September, I couldn't even imagine why they'd want to host the tournament. Yeah, they bid for this tournament. They felt like it would give them an advantage. They threw some resources at it. They've got a crowd down here, and they've been treated. On day two, yes, it's been a marvellous weekend. 22 games culminating in this. From the story of Afghanistan, we're going to take you sideline now for some words with the victorious skipper, Park yong -hun. Just we can get just got the Olympic, get Olympic ticket. 
Um, just talk us through that game. Where did you think it went right for you at the end? Because uh, the last try, when, he, when the, our players just run out, it was the... Okay. the uh, and um, how are you going to celebrate this and what, what message do you have for the fans? I have a lot of fans, but how do I get to the fans? How do I get to the fans? How do I get to the fans? I have a lot of fans. 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 저희가 1승, 2승, 3승까지 걷는 걸 모습을 다시 보여드리겠습니다. 감사합니다. The, we give the fan to our the Olympic, the Olympic the performance to is a form of chance, and we trying to give the the Olympic win for those fans. Well, on behalf of Asia Rugby, World Rugby, and all the fans around Asia watching you, congratulations and very best of luck in the, in the Olympics next year. Enjoy your night. 지금 많은 팬들 지켜보고 있었는데 아주 축하드리고. 다음 이제 올림픽에서 뵙고 싶다고 합니다. 감사합니다. You're welcome. Thank you. Tournament director Matt Oakley there with skipper Park Wen Young. He can hardly hide his delight. Look, there's a ruck going on. They've still got the energy after three or four minutes of extra time to. Swamp their skipper Park Wen Young thrust into the spotlight. He hasn't played in the whole season. He's been hauled over from Japan, given the captaincy. And he scored a try in that final. And he's led his team to victory here. Massive national pride. He's a national hero. There is the trophy that will be presented shortly. And well. This crowd is still buzzing. They'll be around here for a little bit longer, despite the weather. It's cold, it's bitter, it's windy. It's been rainy, and that weather played a part, you would think, in creating the opportunity for Korea. There was a bit of a leveller at the end of the day. Hong Kong had not conceded a single try over four games, racking up close to 200 points coming to the final. And you felt like there was always a possibility and in 14 minutes of sevens, anything can happen. The Hong Kong flags are folded up and put away for another eight months. Beer, it's in June. China and Hong Kong will travel over to France to contest in the ripper charge to have a crack at the 12th and final spot. Max Woodwell, he, there's a face of dejection. You feel for these players, they've thrown everything at this. And for a lot of them, this was a dream. They felt like this was their chance. Four years ago, Japan were in the contest as well, and no one was really given a chance. This was the time with Japan automatically qualifying the best chance ever for everyone else, including Korea, China, Sri Lanka, and Philippines and co. And that's said in the media this week, they were feeling the pressure. Clearly the top seeds here. But Sevens, it's a funny old game, isn't Jeremy? Well, absolutely it is, as the new president of Asia Rugby gets ready to make the key presentations under the watchful eye of head of Korean Rugby. What a moment for these Korean guys. I mean, all... All sort of things aside, they've come together with the sole purpose of winning this tournament. And it must feel good. It must feel good to shake off any sort of self-doubt as they make their way up to accept not only the trophy, not only the handshakes, but the accolades, knowing that they have qualified for Tokyo 2020, and that these men who came here yesterday.